and uh, I will be hosting this this session with uh, Emmanuel Varros, who will introduce us to the subject that uh, we are going to talk about. And uh, this will be a uh, we think it will be a relatively short webinar of not more than one hour. Uh, we expect it at least, but of course, uh, we expect also a lot of questions from you. So if it if if there if there's a lot of questions, it might be a, a bit more than one hour, and it will be about uh, how to connect Calypso Studio with Azure. As some of you may know, uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, often referred to as Azure, is a cloud computing uh, service operated by Microsoft, and you can connect it with your Calypso Studio apps. Uh, how to do so and which advantages you might be able to take from it, uh, I will let to Emmanuel to explain it to all of you. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so you are not seeing my screen, right? Let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it already. OK, so okay, I'm going to mute myself. If you need anything, just call me. OK, thank you. So today, Azure is a very, very big and huge topic. OK, um, I will not approach even the, the small talk of Azure. Um, and uh, I, I, hope, I hope this is useful. Uh, I, I think it will be. Uh, I have a small presentation, and and uh, my main goal is because we have many people asking questions and and with 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 doubts re regarding Calypso, how to connect to a database and how to connect to a database when the database is not in the computer. There are many people when start using Calypso, they 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 are a bit confused. So uh, I want to try to clear that out, OK, and, and try to make it as simple as possible. I have here a small presentation. Uh, it's just three slides. Uh, I, I promise I will try not to be boring. <laughs> um, OK, so typically uh, we work in a computer. This is my computer, and this is my, my IP address of my computer. Uh, so we, we have Calypso Studio, and we will talk with Mish Communicator, okay? And Mish Communicator will talk either with the ODBC or all ADB um, database, okay? And that is inside my computer. Uh, and then I will put the application in a phone, and I will try to talk with the SQL database. Okay, th this part, it's easy, and, and everybody can, can do it. It's very easy. Uh, the problem is when you start and you want to move outside your computer. So how we can manage to change things, how we need to put Mish Communicator on the server, uh, how we change the IP address, how we can talk with that database. Okay, so this is my first goal, um, and we have we will have some some questions here, and we have some some small details that we need to to address, and, and let's let's go. Let's exit this. So first thing, uh, I will start by talking with my computer, OK? So I will start to create a new communication profile. The communication profile is, um, I, I need to tell where is my my Mish Communicator. And my Mish Communicator is on my computer. Uh, I always use a password to encrypt the connection. And don't use Windows name. OK, so first thing to test if this is working, let me launch uh, Mish Communicator. It's here. Now we need to configure Mish Communicator connections. Let me delete this one. Add a new one. Azure. It's not Azure, but one, two, three. Encrypt encryption method. Let's not forget add new permissions. OK, let's start. OK, so now my IP address, it's the same that I have here. 
and all other configurations are the same. The port, the password, and the encryption methods. Okay. Uh, you probably will never need to change the these settings. Okay. Timeout, tries, and time to wait. If you can't connect with Mish Communicator, the problem will not be here. Okay. Uh, first thing we need to do to see if this is working is to ping Mish Communicator. Okay. Okay, now let's use a message on the screen just to say, just to put the value of the variable. Okay, ping Mish Communicator. This will report one or zero to the target, and then we will see the message on the screen. Okay, let's start the simulator. Okay, let's ping. It's one, because, so it's working. Let's look at Mish Communicator. If I go here and view log database, see, we have a request from the terminal. I received a ping. Everything is working. Okay, good. So we can talk with Mish Communicator. First step, uh, it's done. Now let's go to the second step, talk with the database. Go, let's go here, database. Plus uh, Azure database. I will use OADB. I can also use ODBC, but let's let's start with uh, with OADB. Uh, let me go grab my my details. So my computer, it's this one, and this will be my database user and password and i'm using this this connection okay let's get some tables i will get to products uh, no okay that's it and i will create a new button just to select something from the database okay Let's count how many codes I have. Message box. Okay, so this will count how many I have and return to T variable and will show the message box. Let's go here. Let's test if this is working. Okay, so I have nine. Good. So now I'm completely sure that I can talk. Let me minimize everything. Um, sorry, that I can talk with uh, with my database. I can deploy this to a terminal. Okay, let me connect my my device. Okay. Let me, okay, Android, erase everything. Okay, let me show you. So I'm on the same network, okay? So I'm assuming I can ping, correct? And I can check how many uh, products I have. Great, so this is works great with my phone. Uh, so now let's try to move this to to Azure, okay. So let me open. And and before moving to Azure, uh, I, I 
I'm doing this following the first video of Azure, okay? So I'm assuming that you will see this video, then I can send you the link. Um, I don't know if I can send the link right away, but if I don't, uh, let me check if I can post the link here, okay? So this is a quite long video. They, of course, they are a bit like marketing video. They, they talk too much, but they have two essential steps. They will explain you how to create a virtual machine and they will explain you how to create a, a, a network and so on. It's very easy. Uh, and basically, this is the dashboard of Azure. We'll create a resource that will be a virtual machine. And I have a virtual machine here with me. It's just a Windows server. And uh, I will connect to this Windows machine. I have here an IP address. And this is my, let me minimize. And this is my virtual machine in Azure, okay? So this is a normal Windows. Um, and now I downloaded Mish Communicator, okay? So I'll copy to a folder. Okay, I have it here. I will extract Mish Communicator. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Extracting. Okay. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so uh, I will run this just to make sure this is running as administrator. Okay. is also running as administrators. Okay, so I'll run the interface. Okay, it's here. See, now my IP address, it's 10004, uh, okay? So let's let's think about this uh, in a moment. So I did configure, okay, new connection. Azure, same password, same method. Same permissions. Okay. Exit. I just have an SQL Express database that I installed the, the same way I installed on the computer here. Okay. So I don't have anything uh, fancy. Uh, let me show you. I only have here, uh, I have here probably the same database. Tables. No, 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 no. Products, okay. This is slow because it's a very cheap machine. <laughs> and uh, it's very slow because it's on the United States server, but not, not in Europe. Okay, so I have Mish Communicator. And because this is a server, uh, you want to install this as a service, okay? So if for some reason you need to reboot the server, you don't need to come here and uh, and, and open the, the session and, and do it manually, okay? So now we have Mish Communicator uh, running. Okay, so wait, let me minimize this and bring back my presentation just to explain one more thing okay so now i installed mish communicator and i want to talk with the sql database uh, first i will try to use all adb and then we will use odbc connection okay we have some problems here to to address first problem is that i need to talk with this ip address that is a fixed ip address that azure give it to me and then i will need to talk with the with the windows machine that we are in um, so first thing you need to open this firewall and then you need to open the second firewall okay so let's go back here to windows let me search firewall and allow an app through windows firewall i see I think I still have here Mish Communicator. Let, let me remove it and add it again. 
yes, it's here. I will remove it and I will add it again. So let me search. Mish engine, open, add, and that's it. So now I can talk with the Mish communicate. So first firewall, it's done. Okay, it's just this. Okay, very easy. The second firewall, it's not on the machine, it's on the Azure console. Okay. When you have a virtual machine, you will have a network here. And if you click network, you see that you can add rules. See, I have one rule here for Mish Communicate. I will delete it and I will add it again. Okay. I think it was deleted. Let me check. Okay, it's not yet. No, it's there. Okay. So uh, let's add a new rule. Okay. Source, any source, destination. I can select just the machine, but I will leave it like any. And the port, it's not this one, it's our Mish Communicator port. Um, it's a custom service. Okay. Uh, it's TCP, but if you want, you can leave it in any, so you don't need to worry about too much. And let's give it a uh, mesh port, this one. This takes a little bit of time. Okay, and should be ready in a moment. Okay, it's ready. So the public IP address, it's, it's this one. So. I will need to change my communication profile to this IP address. Let's minimize. I can do it manually. I can go here and change, or I can create a menu to do that. Let's go new form, communication profile. And I just need to change the server. I'm using the same port. I'm using the same password and I'm using the same encryption method. So let's don't overcomplicate this. Okay. Smith so settings, actions, uh, show form. Okay. Let me start my simulator. Okay, and I will close, stop this, yes. Okay, so it's not running. So if I try to select something, uh, I will get an error. Uh, this will take some time, sorry. But you see, this is not working because my Mish communicator is not running. So we need to change the IP address. So my new IP address from my Azure machine, it's this one. Okay, save. Now, if I try to ping, it worked. And if I try to select something, it doesn't work. Okay, so the first step is completed. I can reach Mish Communicator, but the second step, it's not working. Okay, so we need to address something with the database. Let's go to the virtual machine and check what's happening. Okay, so I have a terminal connected that I receive the ping and then I try to talk with my database and I received an error. Okay, so why I received an error? Because my details from my virtual, for my SQL, they are different. Okay, so we need to change that too. And we need to address another problem. I will show you in a moment. Okay, so I can go here and change this manually, or I can also create a new menu to change this. And I just need my server my user and password. I will use the same database, okay? So 
So it's the same database with the same tables, etc. Okay. So now I have a, a new menu. I can join these together. Uh, let me join them. Let me just change one thing here. Okay, I will just copy this. Okay, now I need to copy paste the save button. Copy. And paste. And I need to copy as well the actions that are on the open form to show the values on the screen. So copy and paste. So now I have everything on the same form. Uh, I can delete this one. And I will change my name of the, this button to settings because. Okay, let's see what this is doing. Okay, so I have my Mish Communicator, I have my server, my username and password. And you see that we have a problem. We change the, the IP address, but now it changed back to the old value. Okay, that's normal behavior. Okay, so if you want to make this persistent, you need to create a, a database. Uh, so let's create a database and make this persistent. Okay. Settings, ID, uh, Mish Server, uh, Database Server, Database uh, User, Database Pass. Okay, this is just the most basic offline database I can I can think now. So if I want to update everything i will select the separator and i will update the values on the database okay my settings so where my id equals one i'm assuming the one it's for everything okay uh, mish server it's coming from the input server and Mish database server is coming from input server, user from user, where is it? User here, and the password. Password here, okay. And I need to initialize the database when I open the application, so. Uh, select, sorry, select, where ID equals one, and I want to select okay, let me select the me server, okay. Let me of everything. Okay, this is faster. <laughs> um, okay, select everything. If record count record count equals zero. If I don't have any record, so I need to initialize this. To initialize, uh, I will grab the default values. And then I will, um, I don't need, I just will insert the ID one. Okay. And if they are coming, I need to update 
the value. So I will need to copy this. Copy. Go here to the open form. Paste. I just need to change the variable. So mesh server, it's this one. Database server. Password. Whoops, this is not correct. One moment. I did something wrong. Ah, this one, it's wrong. Server, user, image server. Okay. Okay, now it's correct. Server, this is correct. User, the user and password. The uh, password. Okay. So let's test this again. So I want to change my IP address. Let me save. Let me check my settings. Okay, it changed. And I also need to change my server. So my server now it's on my Azure machine, I can show you. It's here, see? So it's Calypso 01 slash SQL Express. Let's go back here. I also have the username, SCA, and it's the same password. Save it. Let's test again. So ping. Okay, see, this mission communicator is didn't do anything and I can stop it and let's select it and and uh, we will have a problem my phones are dying so my, my sound today it's, it's horrible because my good phones are dead and this one I think they are dying too uh, if you stop listening to me please alert me okay uh, and I managed something wrong. Uh, it failed for the user. Uh, why it failed? Sorry, let me check one thing. Let me check the log. It's here, it failed. Let me confirm that I have the correct password. I have the correct password. So maybe I didn't do this correctly. Oh, let me check one thing here. I'm putting a zero over there. I will change manually just to make sure this is completely correct. Okay, it's working. It was the password was not correct. Okay, uh, it's working and there's my password <laughs> in the clear. You should uh, 
uh, encrypt that, but that's okay now for testing. So now we can talk with the local database. We can talk with the remote database. And let's change this a little bit. Let's change this to a ODBC driver. Okay. ODBC. I have one here. Uh, I can delete it. Okay, let me delete that. And why, why I want to use an ODBC driver? Because I can have a different kind of database on Azure. Okay, so right now we are using a database inside my virtual machine. But Microsoft also provides SQL databases. Okay, and uh, I don't want to create one, sorry. I already have one here, uh, and that's what I will do. So I created an SQL database on Azure. Uh, this is on the end part of the video that I recommended to you. And uh, see, so this is my database. I can access my database if I want from my computer. This will give me an error right now because it's locked for a different uh, IP address, but let's give it. I have a different username and password for this one. Okay. So my username is uh, like this one. And my password, it's a bit different. It's this one. Okay. I will try to connect and I will get an error. Okay. See, I'm getting an error. Because my IP address is this, and I need to open an exception to to access uh, the, the the database. So set the firewall, and the the portal already recognized my IP and suggests that I add this. Okay, and now we'll add this IP address. So add IP address will be this client. and save okay so now i have my local machine here where i am in Aveiro, uh, and i have my azure machine that it's on the server okay it's on the azure server so let's first try to connect from here i will cancel and try to connect again okay good so it's working I have just a small database there. Uh, so this one. So it has the same name and I have the same table. Okay, see, products. And what I want to do is I want to connect first with my Azure Windows virtual machine that is running this communicator and then going to my Azure SQL Server. Let me try to explain you here on the, my presentation. So we already have done this. We managed to open the firewall. We managed to open the second firewall from the Azure platform. And now we will do this. Okay, so we already have these two open. Mish Communicator is running. And we will talk with an ODBC server. And then we will talk with the SQL that is managed by Azure. Why this? Uh, so this maybe it's essential when we have when you don't know the size of the SQL server. Uh, so you can manage in a different way that you can manage the Windows machine. There are several advantage of this. So let's go and try to do that. So first thing, create an ODBC driver. Okay, SQL, this one, name Azure, database, server, let me copy my server. It's this one, next. So it's a username and 
password that I have. Okay. Whoops. Next. If you go here and can see the database, so everything is going good. Let's test. Okay. Good. So we have the ODBC driver running. Remember, I'm using, I'm creating the driver on system DSN, and I'm using the ODBC driver 64-bit to run with Calypso 64-bit. Okay. So the ODBC driver it's done. So now I need to change uh, my my communication profile. I can change that also in settings, but uh, let me go here because I want to do it uh, with the ODBC driver. Okay. So when you we created the ODBC driver um, in the Azure machine, now we need to create it here. So let's. ODBC. Let me delete that. Sorry. Uh, yes, add a new one. Give the same name. So you don't need to change in the settings. Let me confirm that. Azure database. The server, let me copy the server. Next, the same username and password. Okay, let's change that. Okay, it's working. So I'm talking with a server that is inside Azure that is on the state. Okay, finish testing. Good. Okay, okay, okay. So now I can update my driver, this one. Uh, Azure, uh, I will need to use my username. And now the tricky part is the password. Why? Let me show you. This is my password. Okay. So as you can see, as a comma and a semicomma, and this is a problem. If you put it like this, you will get an error. So what you need to do is you need to put like this with a brackets. Yes, brackets. So let me cut, paste. Okay. You can try to browse data. But login. Why? I don't have Mish Communicator running. Maybe it's running. Let me check. You see. Okay, use Atom, leave empty, or the database. Let me check also this one. And I think everything is okay. Okay, good. Let's go here, erase the data on the simulator. I need to change to my server. Okay, let's ping the server. It's running. Let's select something. Uh, sorry, this is because of. Okay, let me check the log. Okay, so we are reaching Mish Communicate. So the first thing it's good. The problem is I'm not reaching the database. So and it says that it's failing with my username. So basically, probably I'm putting again my the wrong password. So that happens to me a lot. <laughs> uh, 
let me change that. Let me change everything so I don't need to change it manual on the screen. One moment, let me check if I have my password correct. Yes, I think I have. Maybe I don't. So this one is the user and this one it's the password. Okay, okay, let's try again. Sorry, I forgot to wipe the database. So it's reaching the correct machine. Let me confirm. Stopping this mission indicator and selecting something. Yes, it's working. So it's one. I just have one record on my SQL machine. So I have I had my password wrong again. <laughs> Sorry about that. So now let me go here. This is my Azure machine. Let's go check the log again. Okay, see? So I select one and they return just one record. Um, I think we are done. Uh, so I try to be as quick as possible. <laughs> and so now we are talking with the remote database. I can bring this up here. So we managed to talk with a mesh communicator outside in Azure with a SQL database using OLEDB or DBC. Um, and we managed to open the firewall and open the firewall of the Windows machine, the firewall of the Azure machine. It's not it's just an exception for a port, the, the port of Mish Communicator that is 9000. Uh, and then we are using a separate SQL database, SQL Azure database, and we are using the Mish Communicator that is inside my Windows virtual machine to talk with that database. Okay. Let me open my chat window. Okay. Uh, João, are you there? Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, 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 yes. Great. So tell me questions about this. Thank you very much. It was a, I think it was a, a really nice I, session. I think, With something yes, that we, we haven't talked about before. No, and, and it was too, f uh, and I try to be as fast as I can, to be as short as, a, as I can. And then you can review, review the movie, stop, go back. And yeah. before reviewing the, this movie, movie i recommend you to watch the microsoft first first uh, movie so you can know you know how to create a virtual machine i didn't do that here because that will take me a lot of time the day to create a virtual machine sometimes takes some time to to be ready and i didn't change anything special apart from the ports and the sql database i didn't change anything apart from the username and password so that's, that's about it. Great. So before going to the questions, Emmanuel, um, mm -hmm. I would just like like you were saying, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we we are going to have the recorded session online on YouTube on our uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, I will upload it today, and I will try to send it today, if not today, to uh, on on Monday. Uh, either way, you you're gonna have the recorded session today on on YouTube, and I I will place there on the description the link for the video that you're talking about with Microsoft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, everyone can get a, a better context about it. And well, and well, now you can put all, all your questions on, on our chat. And even if you don't have the questions now, if you 
watch the recorded session later. Uh, we, you can send us the questions by email, and of course, we, we gladly answer it. Uh, but well, we already have here two questions, Emmanuel. Let's go for it. Okay. First yes. one: uh, Did you notice that there could be some specific problems with using Azure regarding all what you showed? Uh, specific problems. Uh, yes, the one with the password. If you are using a complex password that I have here with me, uh, there will be a problems. Okay, let me let me show you. Uh, let me bring that here. So I used that password. Okay, as you can see, it's quite complex and there's a semicolon and comma. And if you don't use brackets. Uh, they will break this. We are maybe we will change this in the future for Calypso, but for now, to make sure you don't have problems, you can add brackets and that will be okay. Uh, if you go here to the, the database, if you check connection strings, show database connection, they already recommend you to use the, the brackets where they are. They are here, see? Okay, so they already recommend you to, to do this. So I'm just putting there. There will be probable 100 problems related with data, importing data and so on, but that's not really problems with Calypso. Okay, uh, regarding Calypso, it's very easy. Just install Mish Communicator on the, the virtual machine, uh, open the, the firewall that is the allow an app through Windows Firewall, that, that's just this. You don't need to open any specific port, just, just this option. Where is it? Where is it? Mish Communicator, this one, okay. And uh, I did that because in some windows, sometimes it is pop up when you open the first time Mish Communicator, but if you don't pop up to, to, to allow this exception, you need to do it manually. And after this, uh, you need to open the, the port here on the networking is this port to be able so you can communicate with the uh, with Mish communicator okay so now on my my machine only have two ports the one for remote desktop and this one okay I don't know if I re reply you but and I believe that the next question, uh, I think that you will already answered to it. What is that? The, the, yes, the, the brackets. Password? The brackets. It's because I was using a, a complex password, like the the semicolon. The semicolon is separate values. So if you don't mm -hmm. want to separate, you need to use the, the brackets between the the, the yeah. password. Okay. Um, don't, and don't by the way, the, the next question is also, so the, the password problem, so this password thing only occurs occurs in Azure? Uh, no, no. Uh, we'll occur with a regular SQL uh, the same way. Okay. The, 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 the SQL server on Azure, it's as equal as any other SQL database. The only thing is that you are you don't need to install it and you don't need to manage manually. And, and of course, you can increase the size, uh, reduce, increase the performance, reduce. You, it's a more flexible way to, to have an online database. OK. OK. Um, OK. Moving to the next question. And the only time I, I have been given connections to Azure, the customers only give the URL for SQL and not the virtual machine. Can you explain? The customer doesn't give ODBC. What they are providing you, it's this one, okay? This URL, okay? And... Uh, the server name. Yes, the server name. Uh, in fact, these are, this is running a, a server, okay? But uh, we cannot access and we cannot install Mish Communicator in that in that place. So if you want to use this, you need to put Mish Communicator in some kind of server. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. I, I installed it here on this machine, uh, and then I installed the ODBC driver, ODBC driver on the same machine that I have Mish Communicator. 
this is the only thing you need to to worry about okay okay got it uh I think the next question is also related to it. Um, could you explain again that ODDB versus ODBC differences? Why do we recommend the later? Uh, to be honest, uh, I didn't. The, I, I used the ODBC driver because they they were uh, recommended here on the the connection strings. Uh, they don't have all ADB here. Uh, I didn't try it. Maybe it works. I didn't. To be honest, I didn't try it. I can try it now. Uh, let me check that. Uh, server. Do, 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 do. I know there are some kind of difference, but from my point of view, they they are basically the same. So. Uh, username, password, database, oops, database, and password, where is the password, it's here. Let me check if it works with all ADB. Uh, I need to I need to simulator. No. Okay. So use the ODBC. We know that it works. Okay. Uh, we got some feedback here saying that we all did be the. Re requires not set up on the server. Yes, probably is that. Thank you. Um, so moving on, I think the next question is not related to to the team to the subject, but well, is Calypso compatible with Node four J? Uh, uh, I have Node four J. It's uh, maybe I'm confused. I'm confusing the. The topic you are talking about Node.js or Node 4J? Sorry, I don't Node 4J. Uh, I don't. Uh... I was looking for it as well, but I didn't find anything. You are talking about this graph Wait. platform. This one? No. Is this that you're talking about? Uh, the question was by. Uh, yeah, Sinte Hong Patin. Sorry if I misspelled your name. Um, could you specify us? Uh, could you specify a little bit the question so that we can help you better? Meanwhile, let's move on to the next question. Or, or it's Node.js that you are talking about. Uh, it, it it could be as well. I don't know. Uh... Okay. Let's see what. what yeah, the, let's what move on, is. and we will see if we if we have some more specifications. Can you connect to the standalone mm -hmm. SQL without ODBC? Uh, standalone SQL. Uh, you are talking about an SQL inside the the a Windows PC. Yes, you can, but with all ADB. Okay. okay. Um, okay, moving on. Maybe you should explain in some words why, when should we connect use Azure instead of uh, any standard virtual server? Could you maybe? Oh, <laughs> that's a complex topic. <laughs> uh, so you are you are asking me between the difference uh, using the, the the SQL server inside my Windows machine or outside. Uh, okay, so when you when you create a, a PC, okay, we are creating a server. 
they have limitations. So if you create a PC with 100 gigabytes, it's it's that size, and you cannot grow them, uh, at least in a very easy way. So with the SQL server solution, um, it's more flexible. Uh, you can change things. You can make it uh, reliable. You can create replicas. You can. It's. It's. There's a lot of other advantage. Okay. Um, maybe it's more expensive, or, or not. Okay. Uh, but uh, you can grow things here. Okay. Um, if it's a small database, I don't see any advantage. Okay, to be honest. But for a production environment with a really big uh, database, maybe maybe it's uh, interesting uh, because you don't need to manage updates and and that small things that you need to manage with a regular SQL server. Okay, everything is taken care of. Uh, so you just need to worry about opening this and putting data and getting data out. Okay, so it, this is. Case by case, okay. You need to, to study and see the pricing uh, if it's uh, good for you or, or not, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea, I have, I have a small, uh, what's the, the, the group? Let me check. I have a basic uh, SQL. No elastic pool. Where is the the, the machine? Mm -hmm. Where is it? Activity diagnosed power compute and storage. Yes, it's the old version, the five DTUs. Okay, uh, because it was the cheapest. <laughs> so this database will cost me five dollars a month. Okay, just to give you an idea. Um, and you don't need to worry about uh, internet and uh, electricity and uh, failures and so on. Okay, so it's, maybe it's interesting. You only need to worry if it's. Oh, fails. no, no, no. I, I don't love Microsoft. <laughs> uh, I, I saw something, uh, Richard. I, I, I do not. Uh, <laughs> in fact, this I, I decided to do this for Azure because we have many customers using Azure. And when I start learning about cloud computing and using cloud computing, I was using Amazon. And, and my, on my project, normally I use Amazon and, and not Azure. And, but it's quite nice. And I, the interface is nice and, and it works. So I don't see the problem. <laughs> Good. Um... I believe we, we don't have any questions for now. Any more questions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Richard is yes. saying that you may need to yes. worry about GDPR where the server is. Yes, yes, you need to worry about that. Uh, because I, I, now I'm testing, I don't have any user data on the, on the states. But uh, if you put data online, you should, you should put data in Europe. Mm -hmm. They have different different places. They explain that on the video. Okay, if you watch the video, they explain the, the different location. But to be able to have a credit and to be able to uh, to show you without paying anything, basically, uh, I, I need to use a US server. The, the The European server was not available, so that's that's why uh, I'm using this one. Uh, yes, if you are in you should use the server that is close closest to your customers and respecting the the rules of the, that the rules of the country yeah yes okay great uh we don't have any more questions for now Emmanuel. Uh, i just wanted to tell everyone that uh well if if you're a customer you, i believe that you're already um, um used to send us questions and suggestions about uh, topics that you might also us to talk about, want us to talk about but if you're not a customer and i believe that some of you uh, i know that some of you people here to, with today with us are not customers yet um i believe that well uh, when trying calypso you might find some doubts some questions some things that you might want us to talk about 
so uh, please feel free to to send us your suggestions because uh, we also need sometimes some out perspectives to understand uh, what you want to do with our platform and if it's possible or if not how can we uh, work on it so yeah we we accept your suggestions um Emmanuel, mm -hmm. do you want to add anything uh yes i want to add uh, i want I, it, it was easier to to manage and to install this uh than i was expecting to be so it, it was it's not a really difficult platform so it's easy to have a miscommunicator in the cloud running and very cheaply and you can also use this to to create updates for your customer server uh some i think it's the problem is always cost okay uh, let me see how much this is costing me let me open here so you you have an idea. I have the, the most basic and cheap server I could find. Uh, this one, it's costing... Oops, sorry. I think the forecast is not yet running. Let, let me just go and check the, the database. Streaming video, <laughs> sometimes. It's a bit uh, monitoring. Where is the cost size, security? Inventory. What is the cost? Uh, look at metrics. Serial uh, console. I saw it for the database. Database was cheap. And server, as, because this is the, the free server, I think this is free for a, a year, but um, it's not free forever, of course. But it, it's not expensive. Uh, it's not expensive. And it's a very good way to use, so you can have a server online and you can update your customer's application remotely. Uh, and it was very easy to, to install, you don't need to worry about licenses. Uh, and when I say about Azure, this will be the same for, I don't know, for for Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if I found the, the, the price, because now it's not showing up, it's just the, the credits I have. It's loading. Uh, I think we got here a new uh, uh, a URL, Emmanuel, in the chat that might help. Hello, Emmanuel. I think we lost you. I... Ah, okay, uh, we lost you. We can't hear you. <laughs> well. No, we can't hear you. Anyway, uh, let's see if, if we can hear him now. Hello? No? Some strange loop. Um, well, while we don't have Emmanuel with us, uh, I also wanted, wanted to tell everyone that if you, if you are still on the process of trying Calypso, uh, please find on the top on the top of your screen um, a banner, and it says "Try Calypso Studio," and it really does that. So you just click download here, and you're forwarded to to our page where you can well download Calypso Studio. Yeah, you just need to find, to look for the trial and install it. Uh, it looks like we don't have Emmanuel yet. Try again. No, not Emmanuel. Anyway. Uh, I think we we got the all, all the all the questions answered, and and yes, that's it. Um, yeah, his microphone just died. So everyone, um, just to finish, 
uh, we will have another webinar in April, like we we are doing a, a, every month one webinar. It's going to be another topic. So we expect you all to be with us again. And, and yes, uh, <laughs> uh, hope to see you soon. And again, if you have any suggestion, any question, any doubt uh, related to this webinar or other topics, please feel, feel free to, to contact us. Uh, this webinar will be uploaded upload to YouTube. Yes, it will be on our YouTube channel. And you can also look for it on our website on the um, on the part of, that says webinars. It will be there. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day. Goodbye.